Welcome to Patient Stratification in Systems and Precision Medicine. Uh, my name is Reza and uh, I will be with you today for this lecture. As you can see from the outline, we're going to define uh, some terminologies which are really important in this context, uh, including precision medicine and stratification. We're looking at uh, stratified medicine as a practical approach in clinic. We're also actually looking at survival analysis and its application in cancer-associated disease. So in terms of precision medicine, uh, perhaps you have heard this uh, term uh, a lot. A definition is a medical model that, medical model actually proposing the customization of healthcare with medical decisions, treatments, practices, or products being tailored to the individual patient instead of a one drug fits all model. In the very simple a definition, a stratification in biology actually can be defined as a grouping or partitioning of subject by factors. A stratification uh, has different applications and different fields uh, including mathematics, uh, social sciences, etc. So, but here we are talking about uh, some uh, biological factors and uh, risk factors which will uh, help us to uh, group or partition or our uh, patients into uh, different groups. Technically, medical care designed to optimize treatment by identifying subgroups of patients with similar disease profiles or drug responses. A stratified medicine is a key strategic priority for biomedical and health research. Indeed, whether described as a stratified, precision, or personalized medicine, all funders of medical research and delivers of healthcare are increasingly concerned by ensuring that with the increasing recognition of disease complexity and heterogeneity, the right patient receives the right therapy at the right time. So now the question is, how is a stratification practically done in medicine? As I already mentioned, a stratified medicine is the identification of key subgroups of patient within a heterogeneous disease population. Assume we have a heterogeneous disease population here by red and black colors patient. And let's say we have a group of childhood brain tumor patients. In a stratified medicine approach, there could be several tests for diagnosis process compared to the traditional one. So we have here, we could have, uh, let's say molecular testing, genomic epigenetic or imaging, uh, etc. A stratification here could help us to optimize treatment by identifying subgroups of patients with similar disease profiles or drug responses. To apply a stratification, we need a robust measures of treatment responses. We also need to have a clear difference between subgroup responses. And as a result, treatments can be developed, tested, and more importantly, applied in the most appropriate patient subgroups. Okay, let's look at an example of a heterogeneous disease with a great potential of applying a stratification for patients. Here we have medulloblastoma, which is uh, the most common malignant brain tumor, brain tumor of childhood. The diagnosis uh, process is, can be done by a standard microscopy based analysis, which we call histology, or alongside uh, analysis of selected uh, genes. Treatment for patient in uh, for patient with medulloblastoma is uh, surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy informed by patient risk stratification.
This includes age, metastasis, and residual of tumor after surgery. Five-year survival is rather high. However, there is a big challenge in uh, treatment of patient uh, with medulloblastoma. And as you can see, is undesirable side effect of treatment actually uh, we have for patient to resolve this challenge actually we need to improve the accuracy of diagnosis as well as identify risk factors and apply a stratification accurate diagnosis is essential for appropriate cancer treatment that's why the first level of patients stratification in medulloblastoma is incorporated with histopathological analysis of a tumor tissue alongside analyzing molecular data. The international consensus definition of medulloblastoma, which published in 2012, recognizes four primary molecular subgroups. As you can see from this slide, these subgroups, which are called WNT or WINT, Sonic Hedgehog, SHH, Group 3 and Group 4 have distinct clinical pathological and molecular features providing initial subgroup directed therapy in clinical trials. So here you can see a discovery of seven novel clinically significant subgroups which improves disease risk stratification and consequently it could inform treatment decision. This paper, which was published in Lancet Oncology Journal, we did several survival analysis on samples from patients aged 3 to 16 years within a cohort of 215 who received a surgical resection and irradiation as an initial treatment. This graph, which is called a Kaplan-Meier plot, illustrates the risk stratification of child medulloblastoma. The horizontal axis represents time in years, and the vertical axis shows the proportion of surviving. Here, in accurate word, I can say progression-free survival. The lines represent the survival curves of the four clinical risk groups. In fact, patients are stratified into four clinical risk groups for five years progression-free survival. These groups are called favorable risk, a standard risk, high risk, and very high risk. According to this new stratification scheme, patients with favorable risk group should be urgently considered for therapy reducing strategies while very high risk patients should be prioritized for alternative upfront treatment strategies. From now, we are going to focus on uh, survival analysis and all the concepts which actually help us to stratify patients into different groups. <music>